This video is about rotating darts that you can't just rotate on the screen and be certain that they're accurate. So this is one that I want to put two darts in the side. You can refer to your um, Armstrong pattern making book if you want to see the way they explain it, but what we're going to do when you've got two darts, I'm going to put in two curved darts and the computer won't make curved darts all by itself. And because I'm putting the curved darts in, I don't want to take them back to going to the bus point. I want the two darts ending equally distant away from the bus point the way it is. So I'm going to create a two-point curve. So that's in create, line, two-point, curved version. And I'm going to touch down in what I call the water. So I'm going to touch down on the pattern piece and I'm still holding down, holding down my left button until it highlights on that point. And then I'm going to release. And see how I've got this elastic -y line right here? I'm going to set it down and then after I set it down I still get to move it around. In math terms it's a parabola. So this line I'm going to choose where I want my design line to be and I want this curved dart to start, I'm t I just touched down again and I'm going to slide to the edge. It's attached to the edge, I'm going to let go. Now that I've let go, it's this curvy jump rope thing. So I'm going to choose where I want that dart to be. And then I'm going to touch it again and now there's going to be a dart there that I'm going to trace off. So touch down in the water, slide to the line the line is highlighted, slide to the end point, release. You've got your line there. If you touch down and release before you get to the end of the line, it might be a little weird. So I kind of want this to be parallel, so I want to come down about as far here as these are apart. So I'm going to touch down and not release. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm still holding. I've highlighted the line and now I'm going to release again and I have my little jump rope. They're not quite parallel but they're not bad and I can move this line around and play with it until I like it and that takes some practice too. And you know, I like the angle that that one's coming at but if I have the side seam angle right then I don't necessarily like so I'm just going to choose a happy medium. If you don't like it, then you can just go up to undo and do it again. Okay, so because I can't just rotate it, I'm going to have to trace this piece off and make another piece out of it. So I'm going to turn this into three pieces and then I'm going to put them back together. So I'm going to cancel out of it and I'm going to move this up here so I have a place to stack my new pieces that I'm making. The important part about me touching down, sliding, well, I'll, I'll undo that last line. If I don't touch, and I'll, I'll do it wrong on purpose, so just watch and don't do this. So if I come over here and I touch down and I don't get the point, I did, it's kind of magnetized. I'm going to touch it again and I can pick it back up if I do it the right way. But if I touch here or I touch out in the water and I make my line and it doesn't come to the edge somewhere, when I try to trace this piece off, it's not going to match up nicely. So, but create line, two point down arrow, two point curve touch in the water, slide to the line, highlight, slide until the point lines up and then release. You practice that as many times as you need to to be able to do it perfectly because until you get that maneuver down this will be a nightmare for you. 
Okay, so I'm going to get a little closer on the line this time. Oh, and I like that a lot better. I'm glad I did that over. Okay, I'm going to set it down. Okay, cancel again and slide it up. But touch down in the water, slide, highlight, release. That will be on a quiz. And if you don't get it, you're going to hate class until you do get it. So practice it. All right, create. I'm going to create a piece. So create. Come over to piece, trace. Select the perimeter lines to trace. And as before, this has to be in clockwise order. So I'm choosing that line. But then I'm going to choose this line so the computer knows I'm going this direction. I'm going clockwise. And that's my last line on the piece. So if you've attached this all correctly and connected right, it says to end the selection when I'm through. And I do I want to choose any internal lines? No, I don't want to choose any internal lines. But the green line will automatically come up here parallel to this one unless I choose something else. So I'm just going to say OK. And there's the piece. It's an identical copy from right there going to set it down. Well, I have to enter a name. If you forget to give it a name, and I'm just going to give it a throw in it way name because I'm not going to keep it. It's just going to be a temporary use piece, so I'm just calling it Q. You can name it side body if you want to, but I have this piece called Q. And now I'm going, I'm choosing perimeter lines down here. So I'm choosing this section. So one, two, three, four, clockwise and in order. If they're not clockwise and in order, and you're swearing at the computer and getting mad at it, and doing the same thing over and over, it's not the computer's fault. Okay, so I chose all of the outline. I have to say, okay. Then I have to say OK again because I don't want to choose any other lines. So I'm going to just set that down and I'm going to call that one W. And now I can trace off another piece. And I'm just going to trace off what's left of it. So clockwise in order, touch, touch. And if you accidentally do it wrong, touch it again and go back. Clockwise and in order is your friend. So this one we can ignore. And then that. And over to here. And then this one. So I'm going to say OK. I don't... I, I can choose the grain line and then say OK. So now I have these three pieces that are separated and I'm going to call that one E because I'm not going to keep that either. Okay, then I need to cancel so I'm out of that. So this is my original. I'm setting it to the side. If you get confused, just rewind. Alright, so we've got our three pieces. This is how they were originally, and we want to rotate that into the right place, and we want to rotate this one into the right place over here, so these two darts open up, and then we have those two darts that make the side seam darts pretty. Okay, and anytime you want to get out your pattern making book to remember how to do things, it's a good resource for this class. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that one that I used before. Modify, piece, set, rotate. That's modify, piece, set, rotate. And this is where you need to be able to slide and highlight the right line again. So select the match point on the target piece. This is the target piece. If you make either of these the target piece, you'll have to fix the grain. And you don't want to do that. So choose the big piece that's already on the straight of grain. 
select the match point on the target piece. Don't start from the outer edge, always start from the middle. So I touch down, I'm holding down the left button. The line has highlighted and I'm going to release when that yellow box is there saying that I'm in the end. And then I'm going to choose the match line on the target piece. Now it wants me to choose the match point on the set piece and you have to choose this line, slide to the end, when the corner highlights, release, and then choose the line. And now it's right where it needs to be. It's moving, so I could rotate it around and put it in a different place if I wanted to use that feature, but I don't, so I'm going to say cancel. And now it just is right there where I want it to be. So I could repeat that, but you can just rewind a little bit and I'll show you again with this one. So it says select the match point on the target piece. Always work from the center out. So I'm here in the water. I'm going to touch down, hold the button down, hold the button down, highlight that line and slide to where you want it to connect with the yellow square and then release. Then it says select the match line and we don't want this one. We want this one. Now it has switched and it says select the match point on the set piece and like with the other one I'm choosing the one toward the center and then choose the line and it's exactly where I want it so I'm going to say cancel. Now if you got your piece upside down or inside out or backwards it just means that you didn't choose your corners in order. If you chose the wrong corner, it will flip the piece over and put it in crooked. If, if you zoom in and it's not lined up right there where it belongs, then you need to just go to undo and practice it again. So I'm giving you things to do this week that you just need to practice so the rest of the semester is easier for you. In this case, I don't have, the darts aren't exactly the same size, but I'm happy with them that way and I'm going to add seam allowance here eventually. I can't do fold close dart end like I did on the other darts. So I'm through with this and I'm going to cancel out of it. This isn't a piece yet, this is three pieces. So rewind, be patient, follow along slowly and carefully. This actually is going to work out better than in person because when we're in person it takes me longer to get through the lecture and people want to repeat at different speeds. So this is good. All right, so to turn this into one piece, I'm going to switch to create on the top tab, Piece, Trace. And it says to select the perimeter lines to trace and selection to continue. Well, I want it normal. It's, I don't need to change any of those things, so I'm just going to start selecting the perimeter lines. Be patient with yourself. Practice the things that we're learning now. I'm going clockwise and in order. And do you see how when I move around the different pieces highlight in different colors? I now want this piece. I'm hovering over it and it's highlighting nicely in that green that we chose. And then I'm going to, every time I touch a line, I don't just reach out and touch the line because then I might get a different line. I, you often get a different line. So touch down, hold the button down, don't release that button. If you release the button early, just back up a little bit and push pause. So I touched here, I'm still holding the button down, I'm sliding over and the line highlighted and I released. So now I'm back to the bigger piece again. So I want to touch down over here so I don't accidentally pick up the other pieces. So are you ready? I've got it over here. The piece I want is highlighted. I'm going to touch and hold it down. Don't let go. Hold it down. Slide it all the way over until the line you want next highlights and then release. 
And do you see how when I'm over here, it's this piece that tries to turn green? So you might be swearing at the computer because you X, I mean, if you tried to touch it from here, you're not going to get those two lines to highlight for anything, but you can get that one. So in order to not do that, I'm going to come back over here, touch down, slide down this area, highlight that line, and release. Come back over here where it's not competing with anything, touch down, slide over till that line highlights, and release. Now we want this little piece again, so I'm going to be in the middle of that. Touch, slide, highlight, release. Touch, hold, slide, highlight, release. Touch, hold, slide, highlight, release. In clockwise order. That really bites hard if you don't do it clockwise in an order. Touch, slide, highlight, release. Touch, slide, highlight, release. I get tired of saying it too, but I think it's the most difficult thing for students to get down. And the sooner you get it down, the happier you'll be. Okay, so we've got all of the lines chosen and they were clockwise and in order, and it says to select the perimeter lines, which we have done, and then end selection, so I have to say OK. And then it says select the internal lines. Well, this time I want to choose this grain line because that's where I, the one I want. So I chose the grain line, and now I'm saying OK. <gasps> oh, no. Well, this is excellent for you to have to see this. It says intersection not found on grade size assigning zero growths to point. So I'm going to say OK. I got the piece. This piece with that error message I just got, it means that I'm not going to be able to plot it until I clean it up. So I'm just going to set it down. We'll come back and address that in another video. And instead of calling it E5, you'll lose your piece if you don't give it a name. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it my name first, and then I'm going to call it Curved Darts. Curved Darted Front. And I like that name, so I'm going to say OK. And that's what it's called now. And when I hover over it, you can see down here that that's what it's called. So I'm going to say OK to get out of that and right click and say Piece to Menu. So that's how you create a curved dart. You have to do it a little bit more manually, but it's usually more time effective than paper and tape if you're going to be plotting out a marker. There are some things I still choose to do on paper and then digitize in. So repeat as many times as you need to to get down that touch slide highlight release. And save that piece and we'll be turning them all in. And I don't know that I, I'm going to open it again. I saved it, but I don't want to take any chances. I know how you feel, so we'll just go up to save and choose the piece and say OK. So now I know that it's gone wherever I put it. And if I want to double check that, no, not verify, edit, customize paths. So I send it to the C drive, my name, or you could have sent it to your flash drive. So these two things I don't need to keep, so I'm not going to save those.